From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Just down the trail here is a wolf-watching hotspot here in Yellowstone National Park. I'm John Shear, and coming up, why some say this is being threatened by Montana state policies. The man accused of the death of two brothers in Three Forks makes his first court appearance. I'll have more on that coming up. 6.30 on this... Um, Did you hear that, Chad? What was that? <laughs> it's trash day. I got oh, the guy to honk his horn. <laughs> it is trash day. I wondered what uh, you were doing Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> 6.30 on this trash day. Chet Lehman, Matt yeah. Elbow with you here. Playing with the truck drivers yeah. in the parking lot and forecasting the weather. You are a man of yeah, many we're skills. We're having all <laughs> kinds of fun out here. Yeah, the about a half inch of snow since the, uh, the show began. We've got about four inches on the weather patio mm -hmm. this morning. It's going to be slick as you're heading out the door. Temperatures holding into the teens into the morning. Uh, looks like we're going to be dealing with some slick roadways. Watch Bozeman Pass, snow and wind. Visibility is a big issue. It does look like there's some snow on Homestake Pass. Gallatin Canyon doing quite well, though. Uh, not a lot of reports of accidents across the area, but we'll be watching that throughout the morning. That snow expected to taper very quickly through the morning and by the afternoon, partly cloudy skies. These daytime temperatures back into the 20s. We may reach the low 30s in in Butte, but that cold air settling in for a couple of days. We'll talk more about what you can expect as we see round two move around into the area. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 631 now. As of today, 21 wolves that were part of Yellowstone National Park's packs have been killed by hunters this season. Most of those were killed in Montana. Dan's John Shearer takes a look at the regulation change which led to that and the disagreement over the management strategy. There is no reason to hunt Yellowstone wolves. Emile McCain has a good reason for his point of view. He makes his living showing park wolves to paying customers. But Montana lawmakers and Governor Greg Gianforte say wolves threaten the agriculture and hunting industries and passed sweeping changes in Montana game laws during the last legislative session. The new rules, laid out in clear terms to the State Fish and Game Commission, makes killing park wolves much easier and much more likely. The commission shall establish by rule hunting and trapping seasons for wolves with the intent to reduce the wolf population in the state. That includes the use of bait, night hunting, extended hunting seasons, much higher bag limits, and larger quotas everywhere including the hunting zones that border the park. To actually see that number, see 20 wolves from the park's packs uh, having been taken so far, was a shock. Here's what that looks like by pack. Seven wolves in the Junction Butte pack, seven in the Phantom Lake pack, two from Wapiti Lake, one from Molly's, two from Beckler in the southwest corner, and two from unidentified northern Yellowstone packs. According to the Park Service, 16 of those were killed in Montana, two in Wyoming, and two in Idaho. It's estimated that leaves 94 wolves left alive in the park. It led Park Superintendent Cam Scholey to write Montana Governor Greg Gianforte, asking him to halt hunting in the two zones that border the park. He wrote, quote, the positive economic impacts of visitors viewing wolves in Yellowstone is estimated to be well over $30 million annually, most of which is spent in Montana communities and counties. Even though Montana's new wolf hunting rules were directed by lawmakers and signed by the governor, Gianforte wrote back to Scholey saying he would send the park's concerns to the state Fish and Wildlife Commission. He reminded Scholey, quote, once a wolf exits the park and enters lands in the state of Montana, it may be harvested pursuant to regulations established by the commission under Montana law. FWP's Ken McDonald suggests there may be too many Yellowstone wolves. Instead of having a, a maybe an artificially high population in one little area that that you know, wolves are still out there and available to be, be viewed, um, but they're just not going to be in a concentrated area. The assumption that any wildlife in the park is managed is false. The only management done in Yellowstone National Park is to not manage. He says wolves primarily hunt elk, and the northern part of the park is home to a large elk herd, 
and that's why more wolves are found there. But Scholey, who declined to be interviewed for this story, wrote, the state's data shows little to no wolf-related depredation incidents occurring in northern Yellowstone, and also shows that the elk population in northern Yellowstone is at the population objectives. So far, 69 wolves have been harvested in Region 3 next to the park. 25% of those are from just two management units that border the park. Once 82 wolves have been taken in the region, the Fish and Wildlife Commission will review its quotas. The management is just being decided by politics and not by scientists. And there's this anti-predator hysteria, you know, in the state legislatures. Local hunting guides, including one that offers guided wolf hunts, did not return our calls or emails. The executive director of the Montana Outfitters and Guides Association, Mac Minard, declined to talk to us. But speaking to the Associated Press, questioned whether the wolves killed outside the park should even be considered park wolves. He said, quote, that just doesn't make sense. Why aren't they Montana wolves that just happened to go into the park? While expanding wolf hunting and making it easier to bait wolves out of the park to kill them may be a political statement for some, it's an economic disaster for others. Those animals are under attack and therefore our tourism economy is under attack. We'll take a closer look at that next time. In Yellowstone National Park, John Shearer, MTN News. Now, John tells us many who oppose the killing of wolves next to Yellowstone National Park told us they do not see local guides and ranchers who favor the new wolf rules as enemies. On our website right now, here an ecotourism guide explain why some of his neighbors take an entirely different slant. And he says a completely understandable view of wolf hunting. In other headlines, we now have more information following the early morning shooting Saturday in Three Forks that left two men dead. TN's Edgar Cedillo has been following the story since it broke over the weekend and was in court yesterday as the man accused made his first appearance. Do you understand the things that you've been advised? Yes. All right, I'll get the man accused of killing two brothers at a house party in Three Forks early Saturday morning said little in his first court appearance. 24-year-old Zachary Eugene Norman sat stone-faced as he heard charges against him, two counts of deliberate homicide. According to court documents, Norman had met brothers Chase and Brendan Estrabrook early in the night at the Sacagawea Inn bar before they went to the house party. A witness told police he saw the three men fighting outside the home. The witness says he thought the fight had ended because Norman began walking away, followed by the victims. But the three started fighting again. That's when the witness says he heard more than half a dozen gunshots and then saw Norman walk away. Police found Norman at the home he shares with his dad. Officers searched the home and found a gun in a plastic holster next to a water heater in a closet. They also found wet clothes in the bathtub. Those clothes matched the description of what witnesses say Norman was wearing at the time of the shooting. Documents also state Norman claimed he did not remember what had happened that night, but then admitted to being at the house party. Norman also told police that he usually carries a Glock 19 handgun concealed in his waistband. He stated that he always carries his handgun with a cartridge in the chamber and usually a second magazine on his person. The judge set Norman's bail at $1 million and his preliminary hearing for February 11th. In Bozeman, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. Other news this morning, federal judge says parts of Montana's clean campaign law is unconstitutional and he struck it down yesterday. He voided part of the law that requires political committees to notify candidates about any last minute campaign attacks. U.S. District Judge Don Malloy of Missoula said the law imposes an unconstitutional burden on free speech. He ruled in favor of Montana Citizens for Right to Work, an anti-labor group that sent out mailers to some 16,000 voters just six days before the November 2020 election. The mailers characterized candidates and their positions on right to work issues and told voters to contact them. Montana law says if you mention any candidate in a campaign material within 10 days of the election, you must notify them of the contents. The right to work group ignored the law and sued to overturn it once it was charged with violating it. Judge Malloy said the state could give no compelling reason for essentially restricting free speech. 6.39 now, time for a quick 